This is the Roaring Elephant podcast for the 21st of May 2019. And here is my sparkly, crackly host, Yon. <laughs> How are you doing, Yon? Are you calling me old? Crackly? No. By the way, that would be like maybe crinkly. And isn't Although, that uh, Windy Wendy or something? Because um, I no had a sole assignment, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> for, or for people that want to know more about that, you have to go back a couple of episodes where I got christened uh, Wendy Windy or Windy Wendy or something like that by something Dave. Something like that. But uh, yeah. again, you have to go drag down a couple of uh, extra old episodes to figure out where that's all about. But we're not talking about that today. We're, we're not. But what are we talking about? Yes. We're talking about Spark. And actually, this is a first for the podcast. We are doing a book review. Indeed. We haven't done those And in the past. you received a copy of the book. Uh, yep. Full disclosure, we did get a uh, review copy of the book to read so that I was able to ask uh, some uh, Rather, somewhat intelligent question, uh, questions, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let, so, I'll let the audience decide on that one. But uh, I think the the, uh, the the book is the second edition of Spark in Action yep. by uh, Jean-Georges. Jean-Georges Pierre, uh, yes. Now, don't get fooled by the French-sounding name. It's an it's a English book by an English-speaking author, and the interview was also done in English, so no problems there. And uh, yeah, I spent a couple of hours uh, talking to Jean-Georges uh, about the book and how he wrote the book and why he wrote the book and why everybody should read books and write books. And it was a lot of fun. Now, you won't be hearing Dave there because Dave was otherwise occupied. Stuck in an airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unreliable. And, uh... <laughs> anyway, um, we will have a giveaway attached to this uh, book review as well. But for more information on that one, you'll have to listen to the interview first, because we'll be talking about that at the end of this episode. So unless you have anything else you want to add? Nothing else from me. Then let's uh, go to the first part of the interview with Jean-Georges Perrin, author of Spark in Action. We have a guest today in the studio. We are talking, we're joined by Jean-Georges Perrin. Uh, author of Spark in Action, second edition. Hi, Jean-Georges. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, for people who don't know you yet, because you're, you're world famous, of course, uh, as far as I know, but uh, tell us a little, bit about, a little bit about yourself. Oh, uh, I don't think I'm that famous. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, um, I'm, I'm a software engineer. Um, I, love, I, love, I love doing that. And... Uh, um, I've, I've, I've created a few startups back in, back in my earlier years mm-hmm. when I was living in France. Okay. And, uh, about, um, uh, my, 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 la- my, my latest venture, uh, was called Green Ivory. And we had an office in the U.S. and an office in, uh, in, uh, in France. And at the, roughly towards the end, I was, I was traveling so much that I had to make a decision where I wanted to live for the rest of, uh, well, of the coming years. And, uh, and, uh, I decided to, to go to the U S and I've been in the U S for uh, now, uh, as a permanent resident, lawful permanent resident. I say that for <laughs> as a politics around, um, for three years. Okay. And so you're, uh, how are you in the computer industry? Are you considered yourself a developer, a programmer, an architect? Yeah. So, so I think, um, I think I started to be a software something, uh, <laughs> software when something. I was, <laughs> when, when I was, yeah, when I was 12 years old, um, I got, uh, at that time I got a, an Atari 800 Excel from, from my parents. Um, I was, funny fact, I was living in Morocco at that time, which, which was okay. uh, not easy to get anything computers there. Um, and then I started, you know, it, it's a thing I get, it, it, it got on me and I, um, I, I could not do really anything else. And the lack of resource you could have actually being in Morocco. And of mm-hmm. course, there was no internet in 93. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, sorry, 83. Um, we, um, yeah, you, you had, you had to be creative by yourself. You had to, 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 to experiment a lot to, to discover. And I think that that's what created this passion and contributed to this passion of, uh, well, what now is software engineering. Um, but, um, yeah, so 
whatever whatever I've been doing is is you know it, it came back to, to this to this idea of uh, a really uh, a passion for for software engineers and uh, and uh, and now more uh, more data. Uh, I'd like to divide a bit my, my career in two. My, my career really started in the mid '90s, uh, and I started by working for a development tool company, and then I created my first startup um, in development tools. So it was really about trying to increase the productivity of developers. Um, mm-hmm. It was. It's. It's always been. It, you know. It's always been a a, a, a problem. You know. You, you uh, developers go as fast as they can, but you've got to see how you can actually use a machine to increase their productivity. So that was a passion of mine for, uh, yeah, roughly ten years. And um, and then after that, uh, I, I completely fell into data. Um, I was already data driven, but I, I completely fell into data and did did big data. And, and you know, a fun fact as that that was that was thing in France. You, your um, I, I I may have a little bit of a French French bias, but um, um, your you're learning a lot of things in French, and a lot of things are translated to, to French. So, so of course, we know what big data is in France, and I'm not saying we are we are you know late or anything like that. But by the time you get all the concept turned from this Englishism to f- French, mm-hmm. uh, it takes a little bit of time. And, and you, you actually, it doesn't mean that we're technology retarded. It just means that you, you're following different paths yeah. and it, okay, it yeah. catches it catches a little bit after. Um, so I think my, my team and I, and I had great people on this team, uh, we did big data, but we didn't even know we were doing big data. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, and and then you got this 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 uh, this push that big data equal Hadoop, and we were doing big data without Hadoop. Mm-hmm. So so we, we we felt like okay, really we're we're probably not doing big data. We're not even using Hadoop. <laughs> so um, so so that was that was that was a bit of the the fun thing. And, and right now, actually, it's a, um, my, um, my 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 passion has, has moved to uh, really analytics, and and uh, I wish I could have more time to uh, do machine learning and and, uh, and AI. But it's really uh, around around Apache Spark and um, so and uh, I just took a job as I just changed job and I'm now the director of engineering for a company called We Experience and mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to apply all this um, uh, all this again uh, at the level I want and that's that's pretty exciting so I'm confused here because I've, I've got a, a world traveler. I've got a, a software developer, engineer, big data guy. I thought I had an author on the line here. What's going on? Uh, yeah, you know, you, you, you <laughs> I think everybody has some kind of uh, hobbies ah. and uh, <laughs> uh, leisure activities. Um, so when I was in college, that was back in 91, 92, um, I... Um, well, I don't want to brag, but I was I was not in the bad students, and uh, we got a lot of requests. A friend of mine about teaching people C and C plus plus, and uh, so over um, over the, the the freshman year to uh, sophomore year, um, we we decided to write a book, and uh, so I decided to write we decided to write a book on on C and C plus plus, and. Uh, so that that's how it started. Okay, I was not. I, I never thought I would be an author. I never thought I would be writing something. If you see my grades in French at school, they're pretty lame. Um, English, English. I, I've practiced English a lot, but uh, you know, it's cool English. So so you, you're not supposed to really write out of that. Um, so so I was really yeah. I was really. Um, I don't think I was. I was dedicated or I was designed to be a, uh, an offer. Uh, but what happened is that I kind of started really a passion for sharing knowledge. Um, and um, so I, I, I'm giving a lot of conferences and uh, mm-hmm. I've, I've yeah. been, I've, I think I've been speaking at something like 
50 or 60 international conferences so far. Um, and, and I, and I love it. Uh, but the conference is, you know, you've got your, you've got your, your deck, PowerPoint, keynote, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're going through that and it's very, it's both something like ephemeral and even, even if it lasts on slide share, nobody, I don't, nobody goes back to slide share to download stuff. Um, it's really, it, it's, it's more really during these, during the time. So I started, I started a blog, but I was not really convinced. Uh, I still try to have an article every month. Uh, and it's more like, you know, it's, it's between technical, technology and opinion. So, and I've been approached by, by some magazines. So I started writing also in magazines and, and finally, um, I decided, okay, well, I, I, I spotted something that was really annoying me in the Spark environment, in mm -hmm. the Spark, you know, e ecosystem. And I said, I went to Manning and I, t I told them, look, I really think there's this problem in the Spark ecosystem. And I think, this this is a book that we should write together um and that that will help people um apprehend and comprehend spark um in an in an easier way well you're kind of nicely leading into my first question here for the interview because uh, yeah you hear about uh, uh, bec spark that's, book. That, that's because you said yeah it's because you sent me all the questions so i know them uh, oh did i no, uh, can you send them back no, to you me did not. i don't have them <laughs> No, because my first question was, why do a book about Spark? So, oh, <laughs> thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, well, so, um, so, 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 <clears throat> so first, first I discovered Spark. Um, I would say I, I jumped from the uh, relational database and document store world to, to, to Spark. Um, I, um, I, I never went through the through through the Hadoop um, path of of things. So um, I really I, 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 when I discovered Spark, I, I saw that as as really uh, wow, this could be the next big thing in data processing. Mm -hmm. Not not specifically big data or AI or ML, just in yeah. data processing. And uh, so I started I started you know experimenting with it and i i've made a small project and i then i got a job around it and um uh, my my issue there was a lack of resources around uh spark and java mm -hmm. um and i said okay well yeah you find you find some examples and it's it's getting better now because it's what it's more widely used but i really wanted to see um more more java and it came from a very simple uh pragmatic thing i i had a i had a small team i was in durham north carolina uh, my team was in india um and uh we had to develop something a component that would get data uh from from a rest service and have it as well within spark mm -hmm. um as a as a data frame within within spark and uh, so that that involved um creating a custom data source uh so it's not a it's not really complex to create a custom data source in scala you've got a lot of examples you've got uh and but when it comes to java it was not really documented we didn't find anything really so i said okay well um, we worked with the team and said, okay, well, let, let's, let's, let's experiment. Let's see how we can actually do it. And, um, we, we spent a sprint on it and basically we, we were not very successful. So, um, that, at that point, the team said, okay, well, we're going, we, we have to do it in Scala. There's no way to do it in Java. And, um, and, and that's, that's where, you know, you, you have this, business minded slash uh technology combination where you've got to make a you've got to make a call as a team leader um am i going to train my 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 small team to scala with the risk as as, as soon as i've trained them they're going to see elsewhere um and find another job because they have more scales mm -hmm. uh or um or are we going to spend a little bit more time um, digging into into the Java way of doing it? And I went for the second for the second, and we, and we spend more, I would say, more intense work on it, and and we and we find a way to do it, and we, we did it, and 
And it's actually, um, it, it's actually, uh, uh, chapter nine in the book now, but, mm -hmm. um, but that, that was that was that was one of the reasons because I, I thought that really uh, f explaining people that they don't have to learn Scala to go to Spark would actually be beneficial for for everybody in the community. Um, and it's not that I have something against Scala, but I don't have anything for Scala as well. <laughs> okay, so so let's put it this way. Um, that was one reason. Um, the second reason is as I as I told you. Um, I didn't go through the Hadoop way to, to, to big data. Uh, I did, I did relational database a lot with Informix and I did a uh, document store, a bit of Mongo and also mm -hmm. Elasticsearch mm -hmm. and, and really, um, and Solar. And, uh, um, so I, I didn't see an obligation to go through Hadoop to go to, to Spark. Yeah. And a lot of the document, uh, when I started, there was also like positioning Spark as something like Hadoop 4.0 or something, you know, like a, like the v next version of Hadoop. Um, and I said, well, that's that doesn't make sense. Hadoop has its use at its own use cases, uh, and let's but let's let's uh, let's also take the people who have experience with relational database, eventually document data source, and teach them. How to benefit and how to use Spark, and that that was the second reason to write the book, and um, and the third reason because there's, there's three, there's, there's three, there's, there's three uh, is yeah, I stop there. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is is a little bit more is a little bit more almost a little bit more philosophical. Um, um, it's uh, I, I I have a. I have a, I have a friend at IBM, uh, called Rob Thomas, and, uh, uh is actually, Rob is actually writing the foreword of the book. But, but Rob, um, back in 2016 was describing, uh, Spark as an operating system. And, uh, I said, what? <laughs> um, what? Spark is wonderful at scaling data processing and then you can do machine learning and, and things like that, but an operating system? And, um, and, uh, so, so he, he got me confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, with his statement. So I had to, I had to dig a little bit more into why I consider, why he considered Spark as an operating system. And, and finally, I, um, you know, I, I, I completely adopted his, his, his vision. Um, because I really think that you can build any kind of application for, and it's, it's really not any operating system, but really an analytics operating yeah. system. Um, but really you can, you can build any kind of data processing application, uh, on top of Spark, really as you would build any, any, desktop application on top of Mac OS or, or Windows, you know? So, so I really think that that was, that was also something worth spreading. Okay. Just uh, going back over the three reasons, cause you gave us a lot of information there. Uh, I think I agree that uh, you don't need Hadoop for Spark. And uh, I'd say that in the recent days, uh, the last couple of months, maybe a year, you also see that uh, with cloud becoming more predominant as well in usage, that people no longer go for the full Hadoop stack, but just pick and choose what they need. And as you say, yeah, if you want to need Spark yeah. and you don't need any Hive and you don't do any HPs and you don't need HDFS, again, in a cloud environment, you will use whatever yep. cloud native storage is there. Yeah, getting the whole Hadoop environment there is quite often overkill but yeah you need to have the right uh, mindset there now one thing that triggered me is um, you say you came from the relational database space which mm -hmm. is a place where a lot of big data people start of course but I don't see those guys, you know, guys with air quotes here, uh, using a lot of Java those people speak uh, SQL and not much more than that so how, how did that happen? Well everybody can evolve uh, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Whatever you say, I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> okay. So I, I have, I have, I have a, I have a lot of respect for people doing SQL, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. you know, uh, um, and, I, and I've seen SQL statements that was kind of taking, I don't know, two A4 pages, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's where it starts to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. Um, so, so I think, I think, uh, um, Java is a good wrapper, um, around SQL. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not, that's, that's why I, I, I 
I don't oppose them. You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't see an opposition between, between, uh, between SQL and, and, and Java. Um, one of the reasons I like Java is because it's, it's really strongly typed. <laughs> um, and, and I think that when you're, when you're actually manipulating data, that's, that's, that's a big plus. So, so I think they, it, it works, it works pretty well with SQL it was also in a way, very strongly typed. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I do kind of wonder, um, maybe, I don't want to sound negative here, but if I think about who's the audience for your book here, in my experience, a lot of the, the, the people who come from SQL from a DBA world, they move towards R more often because it's an easier way to, to move in. I, I'm not sure. Not, I'm, I'm not a DBA, so I don't know. I can't talk about it. But typically, I see people from a development environment coming to Spark and people coming from a more database statistical environment going to R. So is that something you see yeah. subscribe to or is, am I wrong so, here? So, so, no, I don't think you're wrong. Um, I, I, I think you, you, you have your Dutch ver- vision. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh no more 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 seriously um i think there's there's really there's really this 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 two uh this two worlds the data engineer and the and the data scientist okay um and all those uh business analysts um uh report bowlers uh co- um in some ways the old DBA, uh, when it's not about just administrating a database, um, all, all those people working on, on, on extract of, of data and trying to bring value from the data, um, and trying to find insights. Do, those are the, for me, the data scientists mm-hmm. and, uh, at, at large. Okay. So, um, and, and, uh, uh, what I'm seeing is yes, they're using R, uh, they're using Python and more and more Python actually, yeah. uh, than, than R. I think, I think Python is, uh, and, and because of the richness of, of, uh, of, um, of things like the pandas, numpy mm-hmm. and, and other libraries. Okay. And, um, and if you, just recently, there was a, the, the Spark Spark Summit, and uh, uh, now we, we have well, we had pandas, and now we have koalas. And the idea is that you can reuse you can reuse directly your pandas into in, into Spark by just migrating the library to to koalas. So, yeah. so this is this is this is awesome for for the data science part of the world. Um, I try to. F- Focus a little bit more on the data engineering mm-hmm. part in, yeah. in the book, um, and then here you you still see um, uh, a lot of Python uh, and but also Perl and also Java. Okay, so so that's that's Perl. where. Really? Uh, yeah, you see, yeah, in data engineering, yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can point fingers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's still some people doing it, but uh, yeah, and, and I think also, you know, um, uh, one, one of, one of, uh, one of the reason, well, not, uh, of a little bit of a slow adoption, a slower, ah, uh, not really slower, but you know, what, what actually armed a little bit um, Python was also this big debate between Python two and Python three, and I think this this is now a little bit behind us, yeah. fortunately, mm-hmm. um, and, and that now that we've got Python three, yeah, it's I think it's as a winner, um, I, f- I think it's it's also going to 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 help. Um, you know, having some kind of a, a bit longer front grab between the data engineering mm-hmm. and be, be, uh, and the data scientist. Yeah. Um, so I've got a, I've got a friend helping me uh, writing the examples, uh, the the Python examples uh, for for the book. So hopefully we will have the, but not they will they won't be in the book, um, but they will they will be in the in the GitHub repo yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, as well. Um, because yeah, because yeah, because people are using Python as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So you talk a lot about the data engineering side here. So who who do you, would you say is the intended audience for this book? Who should read this? I think um, I think it's it's really if you're an application engineer that that want um, that want to learn more about uh, big data and analytics and um, uh, data processing at scale. So that's, 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 that's a good book for you. Um, if you are a data engineer and you want to understand more how to build pipelines or to implement data quality at scale, that's also a very good, a very good book for you. Mm-hmm. If you are, 
If you are a data scientist, uh, you will probably find more useful resource for you in, in, in other books. Uh, but this one will still be very useful if you want to understand what the constraints, uh, of the data engineers are going through. So. Mm-hmm. Now, I've read the book, so I have my own idea about this, but uh, would you say that your book is a reference guide or a tutorial or a how-to? Uh, I, I would say it's more like, a, it's it's more tutorial. Um, um, Manning doesn't do reference books, mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, and I understand them. I mean, that's, that's called Java Doc. Uh, so... <laughs> So, so yeah, I think it's more like the, between the O2 and the tutorial. Okay. So mm-hmm. when, when, when you, when you look at, at how the, the book is structured and um, it's got this four parts, but, um, the, the first, the first part is, is really about trying to understand all the vocabularies, uh, uh the, um, the concept behind park. And I think that that's probably more like a tutorial. Um, it still has examples. So it's not like it's going to be boring, you know, theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the second part is, is about data ingestion. For me, data ingestion is so, so important about yeah, trying to that. put data. <laughs> yeah. Data, data must be in the system. Um, and, and the, it, and data, you know, outside when it's in, when when it's in Spark, it's it's stored in well, the underlying is RDD, but uh, really it's it's data frames. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when once it's there, it, it's great. But to have it there, it might not be always completely easy. Um, and uh, so that's that's part two and part three being transformation. That's that's really I think they are more O2s. And uh, as as we're talking, I'm 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 writing things about um, user defined functions, and it's really more about O2s and constraint um, around uh, around user defined functions, mm-hmm. but. The, the, the way Manning, uh, pushes a book is, um, and, and, and it's really, it's really interesting in many ways, but the way Manning is, is, is recommending you to, to write a book is really you, you teach something and you directly use it. It's not like, okay, uh, page one, you're, you're learning something and you're going to eventually use it in page 334. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's more hands so, so. Yeah, so so uh and, and it's it's funny they call that just in time teaching which which, <laughs> which, which reminds me yeah which is which is yeah interesting when you do java but anyway uh, <laughs> All right. Uh let's see cuz I have a couple of notes here. Um actually I would say I would like to add to your description of the book there. We're going to into more detail into the book in a minute here, but uh you also have appendices in there, appendixes or appendices with appendix I, I don't know. And you started with A and you're ending with Z. So I do think there's some reference quality to the book as well. I mean, not all the references, <laughs> they're not all there yet. <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> that's not all there. I, I, and I, I've got a big, you know, I've got a big debate with my editor <laughs> about, uh, um, I, I tried to have, uh, happened this like i for ingestion or j for joins on thinkers like that no they didn't uh, like that <laughs> no no they no they did not and um, that does not uh, make sense <laughs> yeah it's too simple and, and and that's why there's a few uh, missing one because i just wanted to go to z like uh, z was really <laughs> finding help when you're stuck and, and and it makes sense that it be at the end because that's where you want to go to really quickly when you're when you're stuck. Yeah. Um, so so, yeah. but so so that's 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 the meep. The thing is, they yeah. let you do a few mm-hmm. things, and then after they're going to correct it. <laughs> Yeah, just talk or about the corrected. just talk about the meep you just mentioned there. That's the yep. Manning. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget Manning early access program, which is basically right. okay. Can you talk a bit about, about the process? Because I didn't know about it before. I must admit, and I do think it's uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, I think I think it's awesome. Um, um, I, so I started writing this book in the summer of 2017, um, and, and you can imagine that. A few things have changed in the Spark world since there. Um, <laughs> yep, <laughs> just a few. Uh, and and th- the idea is is really that Manning is taking every chapter, um, and they're 
the, the process of writing a book with Manning is I've read something, um, I've read a chapter, then it goes to my editor. Um, and, uh, I've got, uh, my, my editor, my, my, I would say my normal editor, uh, was, was looking at English, was looking at, does this sentence even mean something? Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of things. Uh, she's she's very strong also on uh, my introductions. Okay, so I'm uh, um, so she's looking at every 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 aspect of the book, and uh, that's uh, and, and Marina is doing a fantastic job there. And then she gives a book to um, to a technical editor, and at this point, Al um, is is reviewing everything everything technical, and Al is actually. Of the closest possible to what we would consider my my target reader um, mm-hmm. so so he's learning at the same time as I'm going through he's not proofing that I'm saying any too to stupid things but that technically what I'm saying is not completely crazy <laughs> um, and and then I get back the manuscript with a lot of comments okay so Manning does not correct anything they, they leave your 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 um, your manuscript as it, as it is but you get a lot of comments mm-hmm. and when I say a lot of comments it's really a lot of comments um, so and then you then you've got a r- roughly uh, a week to go through uh, to go through the, the comments, and then you you've got a chapter which is I would say almost finished. Okay, so when you when you're writing an 18 chapter book, uh, why wait for the 18 chapters to be ready before you can publish? Um, why not just be make available this chapter to to the to the audience and actually charge them for it um which 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 is uh which i think is, is a pretty smart way so that's mm-hmm. that's the idea between the uh the money the manning early access program and uh so when you buy a book um as you did um you you get the chapter you get the book as it is and you as a pdf as um as a Mobi, as an EPUB, and also online in HTML, so which makes it even easier to make actually copy paste of code and things like that. Well, code is in GitHub as well, but so I think I think it's really great because if if um, if I had to wait for for um, you know for a book on a technology like Spark uh, for one and a half year, it, it's compl- it, it makes it it's compl- I'm not going to buy this book. I'm going to buy another book. I'm going to buy um, something which is already published. Here, uh, okay, I can I can work with something which is being produced and actually influence. Uh, uh, I got I got um, I got people saying, "Hey, I want to see that in the book," or "I don't," or "I don't like this thing." And uh, so it's it's part of a very ongoing process, which is which is actually. Making a, a better and a higher quality book at the end. So I, I, I think this is this is this is this is pretty great. Mm. So yeah. there is some kind of crowdsourcing going on here. People can, I mean, the book that I have now, which I read, goes on to chapter eleven. So the next chapters will coming will be coming out uh, at some point. Now, is there a way you say you 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 can get uh, feedback from uh, from readers? So can they email Manning, or is there a thing on the inter on on the website which they can use to give feedback? Yeah, so, so mining has something called the live book. Um, and, uh, and, and typically you go online and you can highlight a, a part and just say, Oh, what does that mean? Or add a comment on anything. So that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, I've left my, everybody can reach me on Twitter and, and a lot of people do it on Twitter and LinkedIn and mm-hmm. giving me feedback this way as well. And, um, and, and Manning has also uh, a bunch of reviewers. So you can become a Manning reviewer um, and you are, you're part of a, you're part of the, you're part of the, of the loop. Uh, I would say um, when, when you, but that would be a more formal review. That's a, that's a, they really ask you to read the entire book like in three weeks and uh, and give feedback and yeah. uh, and we're 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 going actually right now we're starting the third review of the book. Uh, there's going to be four in total. Um, so that also means that I've got a lot of work when it comes back from the review because well I'm trying to not ignore my reviewers so. 
So, so does this mean that uh, chapters that have been released already can also change in the future when you get feedback that I don't know, make you think a different way or try to explain things differently? Or yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it, and, it, and it and it and it did. Um, so, for example, there's uh, well, we we mentioned ingestion, but there was chapter seven, which is ingestion of files. <laughs> um, I originally said, okay, well, it's probably enough to to do uh, JSON and CSV and text and XML. That's 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 probably what people are 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 used to. So. Uh, I'll do that and I stop there. And um, I did um, I did a little bit of survey, um, and people came back to me and say, "Hey, what about uh, Orc and Parquet and and, mm-hmm. and Avro?" Uh, I said, "Really, guys, you want to cover these things?" And I said, "Yes, we want." Okay, so okay, so I modified Chapter Seven to 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 reflect this. Um, and now it's um, yeah so I've so so that was a big addition between uh, 1P was the first review and the second review. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I, I w- you know I was sp- I was speaking about uh, about custom data sources. Uh, right now the community is working on on the v- version two of the data source API. Um, so uh, if it comes if it's mature enough by the time the book goes out, then I will have to update chapter nine as well. Um, <laughs> So, so it, it, it's it's part of the game, okay? So, um, uh, which is something I told my editor too. Is ne- next time I'm writing a book, it's not on a it's not on a technology. It's going to be more like a on methods, you know, something that lasts more like six months. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's but, a real uh, risk here that this book will never end, right? Because if you look at the speed of open source and how this all changes, it, if you're not it, careful, it could, <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 could be. And you know, as an author, you're also tempted uh, to to add different things. Like, for mm-hmm. example. Um, Databricks, uh, well, uh, was one of the company behind, uh, behind Spark and, uh, um, announced, um, they open source Delta. Delta mm-hmm. was a database that, that was actually very close to the, to the, to the kernel, I would say, of Spark. Um, and they just open sourced it. So it's tempting to add something about that somewhere in the book. Okay. So, uh, will I do it? Uh, you probably make the best book possible, right? But yes. Well, the, yeah, that's, that's, that, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so you've got to do that. And, uh, and of course there's, uh, um, and, 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 you know, on, to be really honest, Manning is, is great about that. Uh, as a publisher, they're, 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 they're great about you, um, fluctuating a little bit in your in your uh, in your table of contents and uh, and adding things mm-hmm. but at, at some point you, you you also want to finish and uh, I, i'm not just doing that for a living so it's a hobby right <laughs> yeah so so you've got to combine all those things and i also have a bit of kids and things like that you know uh, that i want to take care of so you know it, it's 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 really a, 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 a mix of, of everything, but but really yes, uh, um, you've you've got to keep that. And I think the, the the early access program is is really useful for for all for f- to be able to get all that feedback. And and finally, at some point, you y- you will get the printed massive six hundred page book uh, that it's going to be. So <laughs> six hundred pages, right? I've, I've written it down. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, when I read the book, and you mentioned uh, open source already, I, I mentioned you mentioned it too. Now uh, I, I did notice that it's all talking about open source stuff. Uh, is that intentional? Is that just because the subject matter it just is open source? Does it matter? Um, I, I speak in um, when we're ingesting data from databases in chapter eight. I, I speak about non-open source databases like uh, DB2 and, uh, and Informix. <laughs> um, but, but I think I think open source matters so much right now um, that uh, and and you mentioned that in the in the last uh, uh, roaring elephant episode I, I listened this morning while I was walking. Uh, um, I, I think I, I don't I don't see. Well, of course, everybody needs to still make money, okay? But. Uh, um, but I, I don't see closed source software 
uh, having a bright future from the ground up anymore now. Mm. So, um, and open I mean, source doesn't I mean, have to be free, right? It's the difference between something being gratis, no money required, and being open source. It's two not, correct. They, they go yes, simil- yes. They're similarly in line, perhaps, but it's not the same thing. Yeah, but but the, the idea of for me the idea of open source is you can actually have access to it for free. Um, compare, compared as as uh, as closed source or licenses where you you sometimes have to pay first to get anything. Um, so so but I, 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 so so really the I think I think open source really matters uh, whether the licensing whether the model um, it, it's you know and when. And, and companies like Databricks or IBM behind Spark, they make money from Spark, mm-hmm. okay? And uh, yeah, and IBM just bought a red, uh, yeah, they should. Uh, IBM bought a red ad for, mm-hmm. I don't know, $35 million, billion dollars or something. Um, a lot of money. So, a lot of money, yeah. Uh, and it's it's actually just in my, it's in my playground. It's, it's something like uh, 30 kilometers from where, from where I live. So, it's it's a big impact here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um uh, yeah, so 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 it's it's a different business model, uh, but I think that it's it's great to have it. Uh, I I didn't count the number of times that something was not really working the way I suppose it was working uh, in Spark, and had to go to the to the source code, um, and and which is in Scala. So I had to learn my minimal dose of Scala to understand that. Uh, but 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 that's that's great because because. Because you you understand a little bit better, you have access to this to this resource, and it's actually you build more trust on a product like that than a closed source. No. Okay, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper in the book, if that's okay with you. Sure. Because uh, as I said, I did read it and I enjoyed it very much. Thank, Thank you. you for having the opportunity for that. Uh, you already noticed, uh, no, sorry, mentioned that all of the programming examples are available on GitHub, which I think is a great thing to do. I hate typing stuff from a, from a textbook or a cut and paste from a PDF is usually horrible. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely great. Um, now I noticed, uh, I mean, probably this is because you're doing the, the Java uh, way of working here, because you're using Eclipse as your IDE of choice, uh, and you explain yes. how to install and all that. Now, typically, people that think about Spark immediately think about Jupyter Notebooks or uh, Zeppelin or things like that. Now, that's mm-hmm. a different way of working with it, right? So can you Correct. explain a bit more? How do you see the difference, and is one better than the other? I mean, it's always good to give a value. Um... <laughs> Uh, it's not one. I don't think one is is better than the other. It's coming. I think it's coming back to the if you're addressing a data engineer versus a data science a data scientist. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a lot of um, training on data science, and the first go to whether it's Spark in the back end or not. Uh, the first go to is hey, let's start a notebook. Okay, so um, and, and and typically more Jupiter's than than, than Zeppelin mm-hmm. for, in my in my experience. Yep. Um, so n- notebooks are are usual are, are great tools. Uh, it's it's like a it's like your school notebook where you can actually take notes. And um, when, when I was a, when I was a kid in in, um, in school in France, we, we used to have uh, this this kind of science notebooks where you had a, on your left hand side and your left hand side you had this five millimeter squares where you can actually take notes and and, and start and uh, and write. And you had a white page uh, on your right hand side. Uh, where you can actually draw, and I like I like this comparison for, with notebooks, where you have um, you have your um, you have your explanation, and then you can type in your code, and you've got the, the result of your code, and not only as uh, some kind of ASCII art table when you're displaying a table, but really having um, a, a nice table or a visualization or even applications that can actually love, be leveraged directly in your in your um, in your in your in your notebook, mm-hmm. um, uh, that's that's makes them really fantastic. O- however, uh, I I don't think that for traditional you know let's say I'm building a data pipeline that is mm-hmm. taking data from on premise to um, to uh, to it to uh, to the cloud for example and having some kind of document transformation in the middle. Uh, I don't see the value of a notebook here. It's it's you you're building. Uh, um, a traditional application, uh, and that's where using a standard IDE like like Eclipse or 
or, or IntelliJ or whatever, uh, or even Maven on VI if you want. Um, Obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you can you can uh, you, you you can do that very you can do that very easily. So so that's uh, yeah. So that's uh, um, I, 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 w once more when I was thinking about the the people that would be reading the book like more data engineers and application mm -hmm. engineers, I see them more using um, using them uh, uh, using apps uh, uh, IDE like um, yeah, traditional uh, Eclipse. Tools, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I've, I've experienced myself. I mean, I'm a solution architect, and when, I, when the data scientists build their stuff in notebooks, and then it has to come into production, go into a, some kind of batch pipeline, it's actually kind of hard to rebuild it to make it work like that. And by starting in an IDE, you, you get a kind of a head start. And yeah, as you said, for these kind of things, for this level of job, it makes more sense. Yeah, and, and and this is actually something uh, that originally I wanted to 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 to, to put in the book, and it's it's not going to be there. But it was the idea of how do you leverage uh, a data scientist notebook um, directly as part of your data pipeline? Uh, would be interesting. <laughs> it would. A lot of people struggle it's, with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got your topic for your book. <laughs> <laughs> I would have too many hobbies. <laughs> And welcome back. So that was the first part of the long interview I did with uh, Jean-Georges. I hope it was interesting for uh, our audience. Um, but uh, more goodness to come, of course, because the second part will be coming out not next week, because that's a news episode, but the week after that, the next topic show, we'll be doing the second and final part of this interview. Now, how did you, how did you like it? I absolutely loved it. Full disclosure, <laughs> haven't listened to it yet, but I'm sure it's amazing. Um, so as alluded to before the interview, we have a, a giveaway mm -hmm. for uh, three free copies of the book. Um, how's this all work then, Jan? Yeah, before you give away the uh, super secret uh, email to send your uh, entry to, as uh, we've got on Patreon now, and if you're a VIP Patreon, a very important Patreon, or a very important Roaring Patreon, I should say, then you get first dibs on any kind of raffle, we, any kind of raffle we do. So if you're a patron, head over to the Patreon site. There will be a super secret post, which you can only see you if you're a patron, where you can find the email address to send it in. Now, patrons get a one-week uh, early bird access to this. Head it's start. A, yep, head start. <laughs> There's any codes left after that? We will put them on uh, Twitter for everybody to uh, get a chance to. But, uh, well, we appreciate our patrons. We love our patrons. We couldn't do this without our patrons. So if you can give something back to them, of course, we will do that. So there's three ebooks to give away. They've been uh, sponsored by Manning Publications. The uh, is that publisher? Yeah, the publisher of the book. And uh, as I said, more information about those in the Patreon post and later on in uh, yeah in the Twitterverse somewhere, I guess. Indeed. So with that, unless if you have anything else to add, nothing else from me. Then that's all the time we have for today. You can support this podcast by becoming a patron. Every contribution helps. Please go to www.roaringalpha.org for a link to our Patreon page and more information about this podcast. Follow us on Twitter using the Hadoopcast tag and send your feedback to podcast.roaringalpha.org. Until next time, my name is John. And my name is Dave. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Goodbye. See you then.